Hello, Hello bookworms! bookworms. <laughs> Today I am here with the authors of the Adventurers Guild. I have Zach Lauren Clark and Nick Eliopoulos. I can't say your last name. That's right, Nick Eli Eliopoulos. Eliopoulos. This video is a paid promotion with Disney Hyperion. We're going to be talking about their new book that just came out from Disney Hyperion. It is a middle grade fantasy and it is really good because it has a lot of roots of like traditional and like old fantasy. And even though it's middle grade, I've found that it actually reads a lot more like an older middle grade, kind of like bordering on young adult. So I think it is something that you guys are really going to enjoy. And yeah start asking them some questions. So first of all, why don't you guys tell us a synopsis of the Adventurer's Guild? Sure. The Adventurer's Guild is a fantasy adventure middle grade story uh, set in a world that's totally overrun by monsters. So we drew a lot of inspiration from the sort of classic fantasy settings where you see a group of adventurers off in the wilds having adventures. Um, but in this one, it's, it's got sort of that post-apocalyptic spin where things have gone very wrong for humans um, and it's a very dangerous world. The two main characters are Zed and Brock. Uh, I wrote Zed and Nick wrote Brock's chapters. Um, and they are two kids who live in uh, a, it's a walled city. Um, Humanity, uh, after this sort of cataclysmic event 200 years ago, uh, only live in cities. Um, no one ever really leaves the walls except uh, in Freestone, in our, our main city, the Adventurers Guild are the only group that ever leave. Zed and Brock are, at the start of the novel, uh, about to be sorted. We've got a, a great sort of sorting ceremony where they are uh, being picked for, for guilds. Um, they both really want uh, two specific guilds. Uh, but through a sort of tragic uh, twist of circumstances, both end up in the most dangerous guild, Freestone. Speaking of Freestone, there is a beautiful map yeah. in uh, this book, which I was really excited to see. The most amazing thing. The, the, the thing I wanted most in my life was to write a fantasy book, and the, the, the second thing on that list was to have a fantasy book with a map in it. Right? That, was, that was part of the dream all along. Yeah. The map was done by Virginia Allen, who is uh, just this lovely, wonderful artist, um, the friendliest person ever, and obviously incredibly talented. So one of the things that I love about this book is that it follows two best friends, and then I also love that you guys are best friends. <laughs> so how would you say that your friendship influenced Zed and Brock's friendship? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, obviously, obviously when you're writing a character, you're putting a lot of yourself into that character. Um, and when writing this relationship, certainly a lot of our, our relationship ticks and, and, and details uh, work their way in. I think that one of Brock's greatest qualities is that he's very protective of Zed. And in real life, Zach doesn't, Zach doesn't need protecting. Zach is, Zach is quite <laughs> fierce and can take care of himself. Um, but, but certainly I feel this sort of um, uh, a protective impulse towards him. And I would certainly one of the only things that could ever get me to fight somebody was if they came after Zach. So, so I pulled on that certainly and, and finding Brock's motivation and really making sure that he was, he was this really great friend character. That's so nice. Yeah. That's nice. We can put it in the test later. <laughs> uh, you know, we also, we've been friends for many years and have been playing Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons together for many, many years. Uh, and we sort of treated the writing uh, like one of those games. It's kind of how we got started. We, we wanted to create characters, uh, put them in a world, and just have them, like, like a game of D&D, um, live in that world. And that's kind of how we got started. It, it, the whole book really was a game between friends that turned into a story that we, we really ended up loving. That's awesome. Besides the main characters, did you have a favorite character to write? Oh my gosh. Easy. Ella Basil Front is uh, <laughs> is the leader of the Adventurers Guild. The Basilisk. Um, yeah, yes. the Basilisk is her her nickname. She uh, she starts out as this very villainous figure. Um, she sort of snatches the futures from our, our poor young uh, protagonist. But by the end of the novel, we both felt very protective of her, mm -hmm. and we both ended up like really kind of loving her in a way. Yeah, uh, one, of, one of my most ex uh, interesting experiences with it was when we were, once the book was drafted and we were working with an editor and we were going through and sort of refining, one of the things that I did actually was I went back to one of my early Fraun scenes and softened it, yeah. because I ended up, when I, when I had first written that scene, I really didn't like this character and really saw her as the villain of the piece. By the end of it, my feelings had changed, uh -huh. and I got feedback both from Zach and from our editor, who both said, 
no, you know, the, 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 the fierceness of the scene and, 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 and the way that she's portrayed here and the way that she looks like a villain, like, that works for the character and that works for the story. You had it right the first time. So I actually took out the parts where I tried to make her more likable. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> So it must have been really fun to like create all of the different guilds and to conceptualize the dangers. Um, what was your favorite part of like the world building? What was your process behind like just conceptualizing everything? I guess uh, as we were envisioning Freestone and this world, Terran, um, we we sort of it's the skeleton of it is is the sort of classic fantasy tropes of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, in this way that really felt uh, electric to me from the beginning. The four, there are four high guilds in Freestone, um, and each of them is based on uh, sort of the archetypical class. There's a, a rogues guild, uh, there's uh, knights, there's mages, and there's healers. Um, and I just sort of loved that um, those tropes formed a city in a way, um, and totally informed the way that the city functions uh, in this way that felt really alive to me. Yeah, and I had a lot of fun, specifically once we started sort of populating the wilds with these monsters, um, because of where Brock is in the story, and because he's sort of half rogue, half spy, working for the Merchants Guild, like on the down low, I really had to ask questions about how the economy and the ecology of this city would work, um, and what use, if any, they'd find from the monsters in the wild. Um, that was something that I get into a bit in book one and a bit more in book two. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun, sort of starting with these really fun fantasy archetypes and then having to ask questions about um, how, how could this realistically work, what would it really look like, and how would it function. What guild would you want to be part of if you were being sorted? <laughs> I, uh, I would hope to be in the Merchants Guild specifically so that I could be with the Shadows. The Merchants Guild is basically a facade for, for the rogues and the assassins and the thieves. Um, but my great fear is that I would be drafted into the Merchants Guild and they would just want me like running the <laughs> Counting like, yeah, like, you're, you're really good at math, so here you go. Yeah, that's, that's probably how it would work for me. Uh, in every fantasy game I play, I want to play a mage, uh, a wizard of some kind. I, I would have to be in the, in the Mages Guild. It would be, like Zed, just my, my greatest hope. <laughs> Same. So how were you able to balance the elements of fantasy with the moments of horror within the book? I, I feel like Zach had the best horror moments in the book, for sure. I, you know, I'm a big horror uh, buff. I like to watch horror movies. I like to read stories. Um, and I really turned to those um, as I was envisioning a lot of the scarier monsters that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of Stephen King, and there's a, a monster in one of his stories uh, called The Raft uh, that, that I, I pulled from a lot as I was envisioning uh, one of the creatures later in the book. I don't know, it was t you know, I just, I wanted the monsters to be scary, and I made them as scary as I possibly could by, by pulling the scariest monsters that I love from, from stuff. The, the raft one, I actually, I, as a kid, had trouble showering for like a week. <laughs> uh, that one, that one yeah, Nick's the one who introduced me. me to that story. Oh my actually. gosh, it's terrifying. <laughs> um, my fear, actually, was I feel like I was writing a character who was a bit uh, funnier and more flippant mm -hmm. than, than Zed. Um, so there were times where I was nervous that I wasn't going to balance the humor with the fantasy and the humor with the horror. Um, but it kind of it kind of worked yeah. out for the yeah. most part, and yeah. I, you know there's there's a different feel to the chapters. Um, but I don't think it's I don't think you get whiplash from it. I think it actually yeah. reads like two distinct points of view. You know, kids who see the world and process the world differently. Well, we already know Dungeons and Dragons, but what are some of your favorite fantasy novels or other games that also helped inspire the Adventurers Guilds? Uh, I was playing a lot of Witcher 3 while we were writing this, so there was definitely some of it. All I really wanted to do in Witcher 3 was see new monsters and harvest their parts and, and make mutagens out of them. Uh, so that definitely impacted some of what, what Brock is seeing and doing. I'm a huge fan of the Dragon Age series. It's um, probably the game that returned me to fantasy gaming after a, a stint away. Um, I just think it's such a rich, uh, scary, funny, vibrant world in a way that I, I only hope we can try and achieve the same uh, merits there. Yeah. Uh, I also really love uh, Jonathan Stroud's Bartimaeus books. Uh, it's his YA sort of magic-y series. Um, it's sort of Harry Potter if Harry was this total jerk, uh, <laughs> and he and, and 
sort of all magic from wizards comes from enslaving demons and sort of like pulling them forcibly from their world and sticking them here. Oh, wow. um, it's yeah, it's a really like I haven't read that surprisingly deep, uh, but also incredibly funny uh, fantasy series. That's totally worth the read. Well, you'd have to look that up. Yeah. Did you have any books that you wanted to talk about too? Or? Yeah, I mean, I I read a lot, and so so I'm pulling influences certainly from all over the place. Um, I'm a huge fan of Henry Neff. Um, actually, back in uh, back in the days when I was an editor, his book series, The Tapestry, and that was the first series I uh, edited. Uh -huh. um, so it'll. It has a special place in my heart, but that series actually starts out starts out as sort of a magical boarding school story, so it also sort of feels like a like a riff on Harry Potter. Um, but it goes into some really unexpected directions, um, and he's really he's really into Celtic mythology um, and mixing it with sort of sci-fi elements of so this fantasy and sci-fi and that sort of genre blending, which uh, which we try to do, I think, with the horror and the fantasy. Um, is something that he does really well. So. Cool. I always like when books are don't necessarily just fit into one genre. I feel yeah, like it makes yeah. it so much more interesting. Totally, for sure. So what made you decide to write middle grade versus young adult versus adult? I love middle grade. I love young adult too, and I read a lot of adult, particularly fantasy. I, I feel like if a 10-year-old reads a book and loves that book, like that that actually has the power to change that life forever, really. I feel like, you know, a, a teenager has sort of made a decision whether or not they're a reader uh, yeah. at a certain point. And that, you know, that 9-year-old, 10-year-old, 11-year-old is a chance to really make a lifelong reader out of a kid who finds the right book at the right time. That's really inspiring to me. And Nick and I both uh, worked in publishing. Um, I'm, I'm an editor at this point, and Nick was, uh, and both worked editing YA and middle grade. Um, but for me, there's just nothing like, uh, in, in the events that I've been able to attend, seeing a crowd of middle grade age kids uh, who are so enthusiastic about an author. Uh, it's just the, the most fun, pure joy. And then my last question is that on Goodreads, the book is listed as the Adventurers Guild number one, but we don't see any other books there. Or do you guys have a whole series planned? Is it going to be a duology, trilogy? Like we have plan. we have three signed up, so it will definitely be a trilogy. Okay. Um, at the same time, this world, uh, we, we put our whole hearts into this world, and it, it, it feels like a real place, uh, and it gets bigger and bigger. We're, we're, we're well into book two right now, and it's, it's, the world is literally getting bigger as we're exploring it. Um, so if, it, if things go well, we could always, we could always do more than three. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So you guys should definitely go out and pick up a copy of the Adventurer's Guild because it's really, really good and I think that you'll all enjoy it, especially anybody that is a gamer. That's all that I have for this video, so I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye! Cool, thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so thank much. Thank you guys. Yeah, sure.